Hey everybody, how are you guys doing today? This is Jim from The Pain PT. Hope you guys are doing well. If you like the video, as usual, please give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel to grow. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do. Uh, I do offer individual and group coaching sessions through my practice. I'm a licensed physiotherapist. I've been working in this world of chronic symptoms now for a long time. I started treating uh, bodily symptoms in 1998 graduating from Emory University. So I've moved from just treating traditional physiotherapy or physical therapy conditions in the body to much more chronic conditions, which has expanded from just being pain to all sorts of chronic conditions that we see and now know being driven by more of the brain and nervous system than the body. And today I'm going to talk a bit about pain as one symptom. Pain is just a symptom. It's just one of many symptoms we see that the person describes a feeling in their body. And I want to talk a little bit today into the detailed nature of the definition of pain so we can really understand why I'm talking about your brain and about emotions here more than physical structure when it comes to chronic pain or chronic symptoms. So let me go ahead and read to you guys the definition of pain, okay? So the International Association for the Study of Pain is an organization that looks at research and um, puts out a lot of publications around pain. <clears throat> Been around for a long time. They updated their definition of pain uh, for the first time since 1979, okay? It was a two-year process to do this. Um, and their hope was to lead to revised ways of, of assessing pain, understanding pain. Okay, so here's the definition of pain. I want you to take this in. This is the actual definition of pain. It's an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience. So right there and then, like, it's an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience. And you guys know I talk about sensations. I say, let's call this a sensation in your body not a symptom. And again, the definition of pain is an unpleasant sensory, which means a sensation. It's an unpleasant sensation and emotional experience. Now we cannot forget this, this is so important. This is literally in the definition of pain, an emotional experience. So pain is not just sensory, meaning something we feel, we describe as being sharp or stabbing or burning or hot or tingling or numb whatever words we use to describe the sensation or the sensory aspect of pain, but it's also an emotional experience. And I'm really going to highlight this here as we move into chronic pain, that it's much more of an emotional experience than it is a physical structural issue. It's also sensory. It's always sensory. It's something you feel. So it's always an unpleasant sensation, but this, this emotional experience, it, it's buried right in the definition of pain. It's so important to understand. So let me read it to you again. Definition of pain now put out by the International Association for the Study of Pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with or resembling that associated with actual or potential tissue damage. Okay, so the idea here is that it resembles that associated with actual, so you could have actual tissue damage, meaning something's wrong in your body, and you'll have a physical symptom, right? That makes sense. Millions of people do, and the body heals, or you get treatment, and it goes away. But it could be potential tissue damage, meaning there isn't actual any, there isn't actual tissue damage, okay? So the idea is that you can have pain without tissue damage, right? That's what it's saying here. You can have pain with tissue damage. That would be a structural physical issue, but you can also have pain um, from potential tissue damage. I mean, there isn't actually any tissue damage. And in these cases, like we're saying here with chronic pain, <clears throat> vast majority, not all, but a vast majority of chronic pain is more likely to be caused by your brain and nervous system. <clears throat> and that's where we get to the emotional experience. Okay, they go on to say that pain is always a personal experience. It's, it's unique to you. Uh, that is influenced to varying degrees by biological, right? That's things in your body. 
psychological, which is a lot what we talk about, and social factors. So it includes the psychological and social factors, right? We highlight these in our work, the work I teach, because that's what we see as being more important in chronic pain. Uh, acute pain and some chronic pain at times, there's more biological influence, but there's always going to be biological, psychological, and social factors. Just like I said, it is an emotional experience. There's always going to be emotion in the pain. Pain and nociception are different phenomena. And some people ask me about this. Pain cannot be inferred solely from activity and sensory neurons. So we have what's called nociceptors in the body. They pick up information in our body from something happening or information coming in. And they relay information to the brain through your nervous system. So they're called nociception, nociceptors. And <clears throat> they're not the same thing as pain. People used to believe that, oh, these nociceptors are getting activated in my body. Therefore, I have pain. It's not true. The brain is what decides if you have pain. The brain is the ultimate decision maker because the nociceptors send the information to the brain. The brain makes a decision. Is there threat or danger? What's going on? It looks, it sees, and and then you can have pain, but you may not always have pain, even if these nociceptors are going off. And that's what they're saying here. They're different phenomena, okay? Pain cannot be inferred solely from activity in sensory neurons. So again, a lot of things we see here, I mentioned called central sensitization. Uh, if you haven't heard that term, go watch some of my videos on it. This is when your brain uh, blows up or hyper reacts or over over response to nociception okay it amplifies normal signals into something that's abnormal it blows them up to something greater it's called central sensitization this is something in your nervous system and brain this is real and so we see that that's a brain mechanism central nervous system mechanism so that can take normal signals and make them abnormal and and, and cause you to have some type of pain or something okay they say here, through their life experiences, individuals learn the concept of pain. So we learn about pain. We learn the concept of pain through our life experiences of what you've been through. You may have a lot of beliefs. You may have, again, some faulty beliefs. Nocebos are called negative beliefs or associations. Maybe you saw your parents or the people going through suffering of different conditions, and that's in your mind, and that's shaping your experience of, of, of pain or your symptom. A person's report of pain or a person's report of an experience as pain should be respected, right? All pain is real. Everything you're you're telling me or telling your practitioner uh, is really happening to you. You're not lying. You're not making this up. This isn't, when people say it's all in your head, it has a very negative connotation, like as if it's not real. It's absolutely real. But we need to see what is the cause of that pain. We need to understand that not all pain and symptoms are structural and locally produced in your body. This is so important for you to take home. The brain and nervous system, you're wired up. Your body is completely wired up. It's not like you cut off here. So the brain is more important than your body in terms of making a decision or uh, amplifying or deciding whether there's something dangerous or threatening. It's, it's the ultimate computer in, in our system. So with chronic pain, it becomes the driver or the producer or the main area of that we need to focus on, not the body anymore. Okay, um, <clears throat> although pain usually serves an adaptive role, it may have adverse effects on function and social and psychological well-being, right? So the, the pain or symptoms you're experiencing, um, normally acute pain has an adaptive role, like it's supposed to keep us from, should we avoid things and pull back and stop and telling us something's wrong in our body, right? We should take a break, let this heal. Um, something's not right. And so we do that. And then the body heals and we get back to life and things improve and the pain goes away. But when you have chronic pain, it's not serving an adaptive role anymore. It's lost that function to understand that. So important. So what is happening now is the pain's continuing, but there isn't anything wrong in the body in most cases. It's again now got into your brain and central nervous system. And it does have an effect. It does have negative, like they say, adverse effects, not only on your function and what you're doing, because you still may be avoiding and not doing things, thinking that your pain is like an acute pain. It's not anymore. 
we need to get back to everything once we know and understand with your history and evidence that this is just your brain and nervous system. We need to get back to things. We got to stop avoiding because it's not serving an adaptive role anymore. It's actually affecting us negatively the more we avoid with chronic pain. And it also has adverse effects on our social and psychological well-being, right? People become more anxious and depressed, uh, their mood changes. So it has a lot of reactive states negatively in our system, which then promote more pain, right? It's a vicious cycle. You can call it this chronic pain cycle. So I just wanted to share this with you today because I think looking at, again, I'm very much focused on the evidence and science in neuroscience and understanding it brings some legitimacy to what we're talking about here, that this is the definition of pain. This is what it is. It's an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience, okay? And it's associated sometimes with actual tissue damage and other times it's potential, meaning there isn't any tissue damage. It's now the brain and nervous system creating it, which a lot of times becomes an emotional experience. Your pain, your symptom is an emotional experience now, meaning that's what's left now. The brain feels threatened, scared, or angry, or upset, right, or irritated. And in that state, it's kicking out now chemicals and reactions in your body that can then cause literally a physical symptom to appear, okay, especially if you're in a heightened state, heightened emotional state. Or if your symptom was structural at some point, it was acute, and you got into some high emotional reaction, high emotional states, that can then, high stress states, that can then make this acute symptom become chronic and stick around. Then you become more sensitive, you start forming that chronic pain cycle, and around and around you go. So you need to understand that pain is sensory, yes, it's a sensation you feel, that's what I call it a sensation, but it's also an emotional experience. It represents emotion. And the more chronic your pain is, the more likely it is to have a larger emotional component or to be emotion itself. Okay. And this is what I see every single day in the people I work with is that it represents emotion. The person's scared, the person's anxious, the person's really mad or upset or sad or grieving or feeling shame or guilt. These strong emotions come and they actually activate the physiology in the body. And that activates these physical symptoms, which are called sensations. They're not structural symptoms anymore. They're actually emotional symptoms from a brain that is, again, feeling threat or danger or not feeling safe. And we, again, talked many times about the reasons why this happens. I'm not going to go into them today, but I wanted to just talk briefly about what the definition of pain is that you can understand that people think pain is all structural. Yep, something's wrong in my body. Sometimes, yes, but not always. And especially when it comes to chronic conditions, it's less likely to be the case, more likely to be up here in the brain and nervous system, and more likely to be an emotional experience that you're having than something structurally wrong in your body. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. I appreciate you all being here again. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're looking for help, please reach out. This is what I do for a living now, um, helping people to understand if they have neuroplastic symptoms, if, if their brain and nervous system are the driver, learn how to work more with their emotions, their beliefs, getting back to life, overcoming avoidance behaviors, and working with, at the brain level, nervous system level. That's what I really focus on now. I'm much less focused on the body level because I feel like that isn't where the source of the problem is anymore. Thank you so much, everybody. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye now.